we could say with a great deal of confidence that there's a lost civilization that lies beneath these waters, all around the edge of the Black Sea, a civilization that was lost by the flood. Was there a time when the world sank beneath the waters? When animals were loaded onto boats by desperate families as they cast their fate to the deep? Today, Black Sea livestock are taken in boats to graze on island grasses. But Ryan and Pittman believe there was a time when terrified local inhabitants fled a deluge with their most important possessions. These two researchers are convinced that this mother of all floods was the real life basis for the story of Noah's flood, described in both the Bible and the Quran, which is traditionally thought to have occurred around 2300 BC. It's a compelling story passed on through the centuries. Here, portrayed in John Huston's film, The Bible. Helplessly drifting with its precious cargo, Noah's Ark carries the hope for the future of the world. Some experts believe that embedded within the story are pointers leading back to its source, that truth can be extracted from myth. They think they've traced the very first attempts to write the story down. They're finding further clues by examining sunken cities around Turkey, discovering why so many sites now lie beneath the waves. Certainly Noah is remembered in Turkey. Centuries of pilgrims have believed the great doors of St. Sophia's Cathedral in Istanbul were made from the wood of Noah's Ark. Today, Ryan and Pittman travel the length and breadth of this varied country, seeking evidence of the real story of Noah. Turkey's north coast runs the entire length of the Black Sea. Along these shores, the story of Noah is alive in local culture. My mom cooks a shuri until noon. Children, for example, talk about the festival of Ashura when Noah's pudding is made. In the afternoon, two others come with bowls to give it to the neighbors. Noah's pudding is shared with neighbors every year. It represents the first offering Noah made to God as the flood receded. Legend has it that all Noah could scavenge were scraps from between the ark's floorboards around the empty food storage bins. Even today, Noah's pudding is made up of lots of delicious tiny scraps. It's especially meaningful here in the Anatolian High Plateau, as its locals believe this area was the first to emerge from the flood. Whether the story of Noah is told by an Anatolian villager or John Houston, it endures, continuing to grip the human imagination. Let me tell you about the animals. Listen. Foxes, rabbits, elephants, bears, lions, and mice. Yes, mice as well. It's the story of a time when God became angry at the wickedness of the people he had created and decided to destroy them all with a great flood. He spared only one good man, Noah, his family, and a pair of every kind of animal. The story is just as popular in other countries, such as England. At last, the rain stopped. Noah wanted to find out if the earth was dry enough for everyone to leave the boat. So he opened a window and let out a raven. Ryan and Pittman say that their first insight into Noah's flood comes from the religious turmoil in the England of the 1830s. The Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. 
Biblical teaching back then was very different. In the 1830s, the events of the Bible were unquestioned and taken literally. Everything that is on the earth shall die. From the Bible, theologians had calculated that the six-day creation of the earth had taken place in 4004 BC. Nothing was known of evolution or of geological processes such as ice ages. Practitioners of the new sciences of biology and geology, known as naturalists, saw evidence of the biblical flood all around them. They discovered fossil fish and seashells in the layers of rock high up mountains, proving they maintained that these high places had once been underwater. In the 1830s, naturalists saw these extraordinary misplaced boulders as yet more proof of a past universal flood. Known as erratics, these lumps of rock were formed in Scotland, but are now strewn around Northwest England. A hundred tons of dark granite balances precariously on local limestone. In view of what they knew at that time, it's not surprising that many people uh, concluded that these erratics had been put in place by a great rush of water from a great and grand flood. These large rocks, some as large as a house, you can see how they were seen as evidence of a flood, of a grand deluge that swept all these boulders in by water. Then in 1836, Louis Agassiz, a fearless young geologist, was lowered into a Swiss glacier and came up with a radical new theory to explain the misplaced boulders. He said they had been deposited by glaciers that had traveled as far south as England during a past ice age. Attempting to dismiss these heretical ideas was a new breed of cleric naturalist. Their science training was geared towards a further understanding of the truth of the Bible. Unfortunately, ice scouring marks on the rocks reinforced the new Ice Age theory and cast severe doubts on the literal interpretation of the flood. Pieces of evidence, Besides where the... is your sanity going, man? Many clergymen felt Besides deeply threatened now that their arguments for Noah's flood seemed to be discovered... crumbling. Certain William, books. the facts are in the Bible. Scientists were turning their backs on Holy Scripture, arguments and counter-arguments that still continue in some quarters today. We shouldn't be blind. Ironically, it was a supposed undermining of the flood story by the Ice Age theory of the naturalists that gave us our clue to look into the Black Sea for the real flood. The real Noah's Flood was to be bigger and more spectacular than anybody could have imagined. The flooding we often see around us is usually caused by excess rain, but Noah's Flood was different. It was a great flood, an archetypal terror that has happened before in Earth's history. <laughs> A great flood is caused in different ways. Tidal waves can be the result of seabed earthquakes or a meteoric impact from outer space into one of Earth's oceans. They can be caused by the gravitational disruption of a comet passing close to the Earth and the deluge from its icy tail. All these flood disasters pass, but there is one from which the waters do not recede. It's caused by the ending of an ice age. Melting ice causes the global sea level to slowly rise, but some low-lying basins around the world, maybe containing small lakes, remain isolated from this rise because of some kind of natural barrier. The water these basins contain stays below the rising sea level. In a few places, the increasing difference in water height is held back by a natural dam, which may be comprised of only a few boulders. The eventual outcome leaves little to the imagination.
The resulting buildup of height difference across portals, as they are known, creates a disaster waiting to happen. But could a catastrophically collapsing portal be the basis of the story of Noah? Back in the United States, Ryan and Pittman were hard at work. Here's the, today's depth, 120. They were looking for a suitable portal collapse. This is old gas down below here. We must have changed. The portal. first portal that we looked at as a candidate for Noah's flood was the Straits of Gibraltar, the narrow neck that connects the Atlantic with the Mediterranean. We had found, in fact, that it had been closed in the past and that a huge waterfall had opened it. But it was five million years ago. Far too old to be Noah's flood because it predates the existence of our species. We went on to consider several isolated basins that had narrow portals connecting them to the world ocean. Two of these, the Persian Gulf and the Red Sea, we could eliminate immediately on the basis of geologic arguments. The third, the Black Sea, with its very narrow, long portal of the Bosporus, proved to be a very likely candidate. So here was a possible portal collapse whose unleashed terror might have been witnessed by our ancestors. It might also fit the bill as Noah's flood. And I would speculate that the Neolithic people who came to see it would have stood on those heights on the European side. And, and then they would The scientists needed proof, and they needed to find a way of dating it. An opportunity arose in June 1993 when a Russian survey ship set out to survey the bottom of the Black Sea to measure fallout from Chernobyl. Ryan and Pittman, with their camcorder, joined the team. As sonar pictures of the surface layer of mud on the bottom began to appear, the researchers were in for their first surprise. Yeah. Down here. Normally, a sea bottom is reasonably flat. Most seas fill very slowly, so wave action at the rising water's edge has time to erode the features of the land it's covering. One here, another here. But here, the sonar images showed that the bottom was full of features, as if the land had been drowned so suddenly that no wave erosion had occurred. Only a thin layer of mud made up of sediment falling from the water was lying over these features. When these sonar profiles were combined, the picture of the underwater surface was to reveal features that produced a flurry of excitement. The valleys of the great rivers that flow into the Black Sea continued down under the surface, sometimes for as far as a hundred miles. But they all stopped at the exact same level, as if in the past this had been the surface of a much lower lake. For Ryan and Pittman, this was encouraging because the first prerequisite of the portal collapse they were seeking was a difference in water level. Here was such a difference between the Mediterranean sea level and this newly discovered lake. They obtained a core sample from the bottom of this lower lake, which contained more than just mud. Here were mussel shells, and the species was quite a surprise for a saltwater sea. This is a freshwater zebra mussel. Finding this specimen shows us that prior to the flood, the Black Sea was a freshwater lake. An older, freshwater lake at the bottom of what is now the Black Sea. Was the huge tract of land stretching downward from today's surface to the freshwater lake the site of Ryan and Pittman's proposed lost world? So we have this surface in which animals it may have walked on, maybe even humans. And this was an old river valley at that time. If there had been a flood, it would have been caused by water pouring in from the Mediterranean. Here, there was more evidence. The great depth of the Bosphorus and debris washed into the Black Sea pointed up how violent the event was. But did another form of proof exist? the incoming water would have been different from the fresh water of the lake below it. It would have been salt water. 